Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. It's been a long time since AVG was acquired by Avast, and a lot of things have changed. Although they're kind of like one company now, they still want to keep the AVG brand name. I don't really see any utilitarian reason for it. But since it's still here, let's check it out and see how AVG performs in 2018. As you can see from the user interface, although it still has the dark look that it used to have earlier, most of these settings now resemble Avast settings. And if we go into Updates, you're going to notice the Avast UI pop in here too. Now under Components, again we have an Avast type naming scheme with File Shield, Behavior Shield. I do not see Identity Protection, which was kind of like a distinguishing factor for AVG. Under General, we have Reputation Services and Cyber Capture. Now these are Avast features that have been integrated into this product. You also have the option to scan for potentially unwanted applications. And they also sneakily add in their email signature. No thank you. So much for the looks, let's see how it works. In order to figure that out, I have some malware samples that I'll be dragging onto the system momentarily. Now I'm guessing that the scan engine is also kind of improved and different. It's probably using the Avast scan engine in the back end because I'm seeing detections like EvoGen, which you don't really see with AVG, let's face it. It's an Avast thing. So it seems they have integrated the scan engines. Now let's go ahead and scan our samples. But before we go ahead, let me just show you that um, we had a total of 459 items in the original folder. We'll let uh, AVG do its thing and then we'll see how many are left and do the detection ratio calculation. You know the drill. The scan is now over and it's time for us to decide what to do with our viruses. Seems AVG is still stuck with obsolete terminology, but we'll go ahead and delete it. And it says, no nasty files here. It seems we're good to go. Let's see how many files we have left. Well, wow, only 15, so that is going to be a pretty good detection ratio. 96.7% to be precise. Now let's go ahead and execute these remaining files and see how the behavior blocker works and whether or not any of these are able to infiltrate the system. Now once again, it seems that AVG is hiding a lot of Avast technology under the skin. Okay, so far so good. Doesn't look like we got infected. But I can't just uh, work on that assumption, so I'm going to do some second opinion scans and then we'll come back and see if AVG managed to keep us clean. I just rebooted the system, ran CCleaner, and it's time for the results. Zamana and Hitman Pro didn't really find anything, but Malwarebytes found a ton of PUPs. And I will take these detections seriously since it does seem like something has been added to startup. Malwarebyte says it is PUP optional browser manager, which is probably quite accurate. And while the system was restarting, it gave me a weird alert. It said that Avast was being installed or something like that. So Avast was one of the PUPs that was trying to get installed while I was testing AVG. Kill me now. <laughs> but that's that. Didn't do too bad, it seems. But there is another thing that we will be trying out, and that will involve testing the behavior blocker on its own. So I'll basically disable the file shield, not use the signatures, and see if the behavior shield alone can detect ransomware and prevent it from encrypting our data. Now, AVG used to have identity protection, which was a pretty good behavior block, but let's go ahead and give it another shot. So I'll just drag in Atom Locker which is a basic ransomware, and we will go ahead and run it. And we'll go ahead and give it a chance to encrypt our stuff and see if AVG can save us. Okay. 
Okay, so that's interesting. Adam Locker does seem to have been picked up by the Behavior Shield, so that's really nice. Let's try one more. Let's try Wanna Cry. This should be pretty straightforward. And once again, it seems like the IDP generic behavior shield was able to get rid of this. So actually, it seems like the identity protection from AVG is still intact and doing a relatively good job of blocking ransomware. Let's go ahead and try one more just for the heck of it. I'm going to try, let me see, Scarab. And Serpent. And again, a detection. Restart required for removal. That's fine. No encrypted data so far. And Serpent doesn't really seem to be doing anything. That's weird. Let's go ahead and try one more. Last one. I'll get Spora. I've covered most of these um, threats in independent videos, so you can check out the playlist Meet Malware if you're interested. These are files that were created by WannaCry, but doesn't seem like it has affected any of our data. Just added some more. Now Spora, it seems, is also not able to encrypt our files, and that's because AVG blocked it. So, well done AVG, really good job. I'm actually very pleasantly surprised. I wasn't expecting the IDP to still be in the shape that it is, given that Avast probably focuses more on their stuff. But looking at the results, I would actually recommend using AVG over Avast at this stage. Seems to be much more solid, especially when it comes to behavioral blocking. And overall, a great result. Only one PUP that got installed, eh, that happens, I mean, every now and then. I wouldn't shy from using AVG if I had to. Seems to work way better than it did five years ago and seems to work way better than it should right now, given that it's become kind of like a secondary product to Avast. But all credit to the team for keeping this product in top shape. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and share if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to the Peace Security channel. This is Leo. Thank you for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.